Well, hello everybody. This is a requested video of a slow, methodical playthrough of Replay Baseball. I'm starting to get that back on the channel now, but uh, maybe people haven't seen the game in a while or haven't played the game at all and want to learn more about it. And so I have two choices. I could either do what I would call an instructional video, going over the rules and ratings and everything like that or a detailed playthrough so you can see the game in action and hopefully a lot of the things that would happen in the game now it can't capture everything in one game all the situations are not going to come up on the dice rolls but um, i thought that might be the best way for a new person to be able to see the game see how it flows and see if this game is something you would enjoy there's also a computer version of the game, but I don't have that up because I do not have the 1993 season in the computer. I was originally going to do the Dodgers and Marlins first ever game for the playthrough, but I decided to hold that for a regular video. And today I decided to do opening day 1993 in Kansas City. Great pitching matchup, Roger Clemens against Kevin Apier. So I have no accoutrements out here whatsoever. I do have the original playbook which has the results, and this will replace the trifold because the trifold, you just can't get it on. The phone's not going to pick all that up with the camera, so much easier to do it this way and show all the results. I do have my regular red, white, and blue dice, and I will actually roll on the book. I'm not going to use my dice tower. That's just too loud, and so I want this to be more of an intimate, uh, just uh, you know, people hanging out and me hopefully going through a detailed playthrough and explaining uh, what's happening and why it's happening and so forth. I've also got the original score sheet from play. I'm sorry, from replay. And I've got the ratings for all the players written in here. Got the visiting home pitcher. And of course, let me pull this back up so you can actually see the line score. This was game was played opening day for April 5th, 1993. The Red Sox and the Royals at Kauffman Stadium. Now, the picture on Kauffman Stadium does show a newer picture. I believe in 1993 they still had AstroTurf. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they did. Um, so, this picture is a little bit uh, newer than what should be there, probably. But, you know, what are you going to the, the important thing are the ratings. I mean, the, the picture is almost irrelevant. All right. So, Boston's a visiting team, so we need hitters. And we'll just go through the lineups. And these are the as-played lineups. And we'll just go through them as they come about. I'm going to open the book just prematurely to column number one and two. And we'll keep it there until we need to move somewhere else. Now, let me check. Yeah, it looks like uh, I may need to move this over a hair to make sure everything fits on camera hopefully I want to get all the book in there as much as possible and I think I'm able to do that this way by kind of overlapping with the score sheet and uh, hopefully everything now still shows in place hopefully it does okay first things first we'll start I'm going to do this as if so if, if, if you guys are experienced or semi-experienced replay, uh, replay players, you're going to find this beginning part a little bit tedious because I'm going at this as if someone has never seen the game is watching this for the first time. Basic components are the dice. You use red, white, and blue. Those are the colored dice. And it's also the order they are deciphered in. So this would be a 4-1-6 because you always go red, white, and blue. Now, what are the significance of the colors? Well, let's look at the a pitcher and batter card right here. If you notice, the top of the of each of the cards, the numbers are in red. One, two, three, four, five, six. That tells you the red die is going to control the column for both the batter card and the pitcher card. So whatever we roll, let's just change this, say, to a one. We'll change this to a one since I'm on column one. And it also tells you what column in the book or on the trifold you're looking at. So 
let's say we rolled a one. Let's make this a one, four, six instead of a one, whatever it was before. All right, so it's a one. That means we're in column number one of Scott Fletcher and we're on column number one of Kevin Apier. Then the white die. The white die is has black numerals. The batter card, the one, two, three, four, five, six is in black. So it kind of cues you that this goes to the batter card in case you forget. So we're on row number four. It tells you what row we're on. So on Scott Fletcher, we're on column one, row four, and we're in this box right here, which says number 35. We'll get to that in a minute. The blue die. The blue die tells you what row on the picture card. If you notice here, one, two, three, four, five, six on the picture card is in blue. So kind of clues you, reminds you that blue is for the picture. So we come down here to row six. Column one, which is a number two. So we take the 35 and the two, add them together, get a 37, and we read what the book says. Column one, 37, says ground ball to second base. Now, over here to your right gives you the infield situations. So if the infield is back, it's out at first, and any runners advance. If they're halfway or at double play depth, it's a double play. If the infield is in, out at first as lead runners hold, other runners advance. If lead runner is forced, he is out on a fielder's choice. So that gives you all the different things there. So that's basically the genesis of an at-bat in replay baseball. All right. Let's look at some of the player ratings and just kind of go over why they're, you know, how they're rated and what's good, what's bad, so forth. Scott Fletcher is an infielder. Billy Hatcher is an outfielder, so we'll take both of those. They are rated at every position they play. They even tell you on here how many games they played at each position. Scott Fletcher played 116 games at second base, did play two at short and one at third. At second base, he is a one. Number, the ratings are go one to five for both infielders and outfielders. For infielders, the lower numbers are the better. So one is the best you can have. So Scott Fletcher was an excellent range. He had excellent range, and that's what these numbers are, are range numbers. He had excellent range at second base, the best you can have. Now, when he moved him to short and third, he was much worse. He was only a four, so not you know quite as good. The two numbers above the range are the error ratings, 11 to 66. 11 the worst, 66 the best. The reason it's the best is when you have an error check, you roll two dice. And the only way you get an error is if the two dice read in this fashion, say 34, because you read red and white, red tens, white ones, that's a 34. The two dice, the only way to make an error is to have those two dice total more than this error rating. So in this case, he has a 53. So we have to roll a 54 or higher, which is not as likely to be an error. Where here is an 11 is an error. He's going to roll an error every time unless we roll an 11. That's the only way it's not an error because the number has to be greater than this. So if we roll a anything other than 11, he's going to make an error down here. So top number, uh, range number, you want the ones in the infield are the best uh, because you're going to add that to what the batter does and that may increase a hit or take a hit away or move you straight to an error check or whatever. And the low number, the higher numbers up here are worse. Conversely, on the outfielder card, it's a, the exact opposite. You want the higher numbers in your range. The first number is range, second number is arm, and the error is the third number. And again, you want higher numbers in both the arm and the error if you can get them. I'm sorry, the error, the range, and the arm if you can get him. He's a three. You can go up to five. Three is average, so he's pretty average center fielder, average right fielder. A little bit below average arm with a two. Three would be average out of one through five. Three would be average, so he's a little bit below that. But he's got a really good error rating, especially in right field. You have to roll a 66. It's the only way you can make an error in right field is if you roll a 66. You have to roll a 57 or higher in order for it to be an error uh, when he's in center field. So that's the way you decipher that. Infielders, you want the, the range, you want the numbers to be lower. You want one's the best, where in outfielders, five is the best. So it's kind of flip-flop just the way the system works. Uh, they say Billy Hatcher also played two games at second base. You can see he's terrible. He's got the worst range and the worst error rating. So that's desperation time if you put him in second base. 
Looking also at the batter card, you can see four is his speed. So he's got a speed rating of four. And I had the, the uh, pages from the game itself, the instructions. I was gonna kind of go in concert with those to go over the ratings with what the way they are done. So let's look at, okay. All right, so let's look at the second number, which is a D, or second character. It's actually a letter, obviously. D is his base stealing rating, and A is the best, and L is the worst. So obviously, D is a lot better, or closer to the A than the L is. So he's a decent base stealer, and he stole 14 bases. And he's also got, well, I'll get to those other symbols later, but anyway, that's what that's there for. And let's see here. There's also a bunt rating right here. One is the best, so it's an excellent bunter. It's again one to five. He's an excellent bunter because that's a one there. So one's the best bunt rating you can have. And I believe if we go to the well, I'll just we'll call it that. It's he's, it's the best you can have. Just. For now, that's a good thing to know. And he's also a right hand. Tells you he's a right handed batter. So that's what the R there for. Blue uh, tells you it's left handed batter. The little L would be in blue, like it is for Mike Greenwell. See, Greenwell's got the L and it's in blue. So, but this tells you he's a right handed batter. All right, let's look at the columns. Column one, two, three, four, five, and six. Column six is the power column. If they've got low numbers in the power column, like seven, eight, nine, that means they've got some pop potentially. If they've got 36 in the six column, it means they strike out a little bit more. And a lot of your strikeouts are going to come from the pitcher card in column or from the batter card in column one and two when the pitcher uh, checks the strikeouts. That's column one and two. Column three are your basic columns. Column four is always a fielding column. So on the pitcher card, let's get Kevin Apier on the pitching card. You'll see column four has all the fielding ratings here. So get a column four to fielders check. I don't want to do too much of this because I want to get into the game. And I'm thinking maybe trying. I don't want to. I've probably already delved too much into where I didn't want to go with this. But we're gonna go ahead and play the game. I think that's the best way to do it. But I did want to give a slight intro into the, the player ratings and so forth and the the playbook is very good about base running telling you what's happening the base running tells you any of the little idiosyncrasies on the card like if a pitcher has a star or a pitcher has a w it explains all that so it's pretty good so what we're going to do first at bat kevin apier and scott fletcher i've got them listed batter first pitcher second because that's the way you read the cards or read the dice so let's just get started and let's see how we go with this. Like I said, I'm going to I'm gonna take my time and try to explain everything as best I can. I may get a little bit quicker the longer the game goes, but at least in the beginning, I want to be very methodical and make sure that um, it's understandable what's going on for somebody that's never seen the game. And sometimes it's hard for us that, that's played these games for years to be back in that position, but we'll try to put that hat on and see if it'll, if it'll do it. All right, let's roll the dice and see what happens. First dice roll is a one, two, two. So we're already in column one. So let's go to Scott Fletcher again. Let's look at the card with Kevin Napier. We'll do this for the first at bat only. Column one means we're in column one for both players. Two means we're in the second row on Scott Fletcher and we're on the second row on Kevin Apier. So we got a one and we got a 35, total of 36. So in this instance, on a total of 36, it's a ground ball to third base. The infield is back because no runners are on base, so it's just a ground ball to third base. So to start things off, Scott Fletcher is going to ground to third base, and that is taken care of. Five to three ground out, one away. Third baseman for the Royals, by the way, is Keith Miller. So he grounds to Keith Miller for out number one. Billy Hatcher is your next batter. All right, we get a six, five, two. So let's move the dice over here. And 
These things are tabbed, like I said, so we'll go to column number six right here. It's where we want to be, column six. Everything is under column six. So we had a six, five, two. Six, five, two. On, whoops, I got them backwards. Apier should be over here. All right, so six, five, under Billy Hatcher, column six and row five is a 36. And I said that was a strikeout. Why is it a strikeout? Well, you take the 36, and you come over here to Kevin Apier, six and a two is a one, total of 37. So we come down to column six, and anything 37 to 41 is a strikeout. So it didn't matter what Kevin Apier added to the 36, whether it's a one through a five, you're going to get 37 to 41. So anytime you see 36 on the card, it is a strikeout. So Billy Hatcher goes down on strikes for out number two. Like I said, I have no accoutrements here. I'm not going to show, it's not going to show how many outs there are, who's on base or whatever. I mean, I'll do that for you verbally, but I just don't have room because I want to show the book. So, you know, very much analog presentation. Here's Mike Greenwell. All right, we're still in column six, 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 four. Now, six, six, much like anybody familiar with APA that rolls a 66 knows that's very, very good. No different here in replay baseball. So a 6-6 six, six is a 9 for Mike Greenwell. 6-4 on Apier is a 1. That's a total of 10. 10 in column 6 is a single to center field. So Mike Greenwell has singled. Now, if you get a little higher, like, you know, 1s are the best. For pitcher cards, 1s, the low numbers are the best. So anything that's a 1 means he's excellent in that area. So when Kevin Apier holding off home runs, He's excellent. He's got five ones, and he does have a three here at 6-6. Six, six. So had we rolled a 6-6-6, six, 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 then we would have taken the nine and added to the three. It would have been a 12, and it would have been a chance for a home run. But since he's better at holding off home runs, he held that to just a single instead of a home run chance. So Mike Greenwell is at first base with two outs, and that brings up Andre Dawson. So Andre Dawson, right fielder, is up. Again, we're in column six. Boy, we're just hitting those. And unfortunately for uh, Apier, we did find the blue six. So column six, row two, is an eight for Dawson. And column six, let me see something. Did I just mess something? No, I didn't. Okay. Column six, row th six for Apier is a three. So that's a total of 11. When you get an 11, it says single to right field, but it does have an asterisk by it. When you go to an asterisk, it says home run question mark, option on plays 11 and 12. So when you get a total of 11 or 12, we go over here to this home run question mark chart, and we roll 1d6. If it's a 6, then that single turns into a home run. If it's a 1 through 5, it stays a single. So we'll re-roll and see what happens. And it's a 6, so it turns into a home run. So Andre Dawson has just hit a two-run homer off of Kevin Apier. And the Red Sox just that quickly lead it two to nothing. So just that quickly, because I rolled those sixes. I don't know why I'm rolling sixes like that. It's not intentional. I couldn't do it if I tried. It's just happening that way. And that brings up Mo Vaughn. Let's see if we can get off column six for a change. We do. We go to column five. That's the walk. A lot of times that generates your walks. So we go to column five. And maybe it'd be better to do it this way. Maybe I can do it. If I fold it like this, then maybe it'll give me more room. Maybe that's a better way to do it. I'm even learning as I'm trying to show this show the game. That's interesting. All right, so we had a five, two, four. So we're gonna move on. Five, two is a twenty-seven. There is a little carrot sign above it. We can get to that if it comes up. Five, two is a twenty-seven. Five, four is a three. Add those up, you get thirty. Thirty in column five is a fly out to center field. And it says, if batter has a carrot symbol beside his result with a run on third base and less than two outs, it's a sacrifice fly. Well, A, there's two outs, and B, there's nobody on base. So, But it would have been a sack fly. That's what the carrot there means. He has a propensity to hit sacrifice flies. But in this case, it's just a fly to center, and the inning's over. So 2 nothing Boston. I think I'm going to keep the chart like this on one side or the other because it'll allow more room. That way I don't cover up the score sheet, and it's just a little bit, hopefully a little bit more condensed. Take up less space on the table, and hopefully gets captured a little bit better by the phone. All right, so 
two nothing. I was expecting a big pitching duel, and we got a two run homer from Dawson that changed all that because of my propensity to roll sixes for whatever reason. And now there's a little bit of glare on there. I, I, I'm having a hard time preventing that because I want it to be lit, lit enough where you can see everything. Um, let's see. Maybe I can try to take this off. I don't know if that will help or not. It might. Let's put it back on and see what happens. I still like the brightness. So hopefully we can just get around that little blotch of light. All right, so now we go to Kansas City at the plate against Roger Clemens. And I want to roll on the book, not on the clipboard, because the book's a lot quieter. And on this Sunday morning, I prefer to have quiet. All right, so we got a three, six, and a six. Now the three, six is the interesting little roll because a three, six, no matter who's at bat, that is your lefty righty split check. So let's go to column three and I'll show you what, what I mean. Column three. So that's a 42 for a right handed hitter. That's a 42. Three, six of the 42 for Roger Clemens, a three, six, is a four, total of 46. But the picture, picture number really is irrelevant. The thing that's, irre the thing that's relevant is what, ha what handedness he throws from. So we got a total of 46, column three. 46 in column three goes 43 to 47. If it's versus a left-handed pitcher, it's a single. If it's versus a right-handed pitcher, it's a leaping catch by the shortstop for the out. So that's factors in the left-right split. Since he's a righty, we're going to be over here, and that means since he had to face a righty, he lines it to short. So that is the left-right split. And I usually circle that to see how many times it comes up in the game. So, but that time I did right there, left-right split, 3-6 is your left-right split. There's also split chances on column 6. That's where they have the little lines on the results, like here for Wally Joyner. He's more apt to hit a home run against a righty, which is why the 11's there, and more apt to hit a double against lefties, which is why the 59 is there. Okay, so Clemens gets Miller. Here's Wally Joyner. We get a 5-6-1. So we go back to column 5 with the tab. Back to column 5. And the roll was a 5-6-1. 5-6 is a 3, a 5-1 is a 2, total of 5. Come over here to number 5. Grounded to third base, but there is an asterisk here. With runners on first, with runners on and first base open, scores a walk. Well, nobody's on base, so it won't be a walk. It'll just simply be a ground ball to third base. And had there been runners on, infield back, out at first, runners advance. It's kind of the same it is for other uh, areas in the, in the playbook, but that's simply just a tells you what happened, but basically the only thing to worry about is if there's runners on base and first base is open, this changes to a walk. But since nobody's on base, it stays a ground out, 5-3. Cooper over to Vaughn, out number two. And here comes George Brett. All right, back in column six again, 6-5-3. Six, okay, let's mosey over to column six. 6-5 six, is a 16. 6-3 is a 2, total of 18 in column 6. 18 in column 6 is a deep fly out to left. It would be a sacrifice fly if a runner was on third and less than two outs. Otherwise, just a fly to left and the inning's over. So Roger Clemens goes 1-2-3 on the Royals. And we're back to the top of the second. Yvonne Calderon will lead things off. He is the designated hitter in this game. We get a three six. Oh, we're back to the left right split again. Three six six. And as we saw before, when it's a right hander against a right hander, it's a line out to short. We don't even have to check the result in the book because it's the same as we just had. Again, we get that same leaping catch right here. So that's the second time it's come up. So yes, replay baseball doesn't have as robust splits as other games might have, like Stratomatic um, or payoff pitch but it's enough there that if you if you disregard it and load your lineup with right handers against a right hander you could pay the price just like that so here's scott cooper third baseman 
442. So we finally get a, a 424, rather. So we finally get a fielding check. And column four is your fielding check. So we go to column four. And if there's three sections, infield back, infield halfway, which translates to double play depth, or half or infield in. All right, the infield's back because nobody's on base. We get a 4-2 for Cooper. 4-2 for Cooper is an 11. 4-4 four, four for Apier is the shortstop. So the shortstop in this case is Greg Gagne. So we go to our chart for the ratings, and Gagne is a 1. So we're going to take the 1 for his rating and add it to the 11 for Scott Cooper. Get a total of 12. 12 through 16 is a possible error. So anytime you have an 11 in column four, that means we're going to go to an error check because it doesn't matter who the fielder is, it's going to change this. It's going to make this an error check. So it's a possible error on Greg Gagne. Let me pull up Greg Gagne's card for you. Greg Gagne, we look at his rating. He's got an error rating of 56. So we're going to roll all three dice. And the red and white dice, a red and white dice have to total more than 56 for it to be an error. We roll the blue die because if there is an error and the blue die is a six, it becomes a two base error. But the key number to look for or watch out for is the error check on Greg Agney, and that's 56. So this has to be a 57 or more on the red dice to be an error. And it's not, it's 26, so that means he's going to make the play. So it says, and that's just what I said, roll three die against the, if red white is not higher, batter's out at first, any runners advance. Nobody's on base, so it's simply a 6-3 ground out. Scott Cooper to Greg Gagne. But if he was a poor shortstop fielder, then that would have been an error. All right, here's Tony Pena with two outs and the base is empty. We're still on column four. We get a 4-1-2. Four, 4-1 one, four, one is a 16. 4-2 is the second baseman. That is Jose Lind. Jose Lind has a defensive rating of 2. So we're going to add the 16 to the 2 for a total of 18. So 18 says, 17 through 20, 18 says grounder out at first. So infield is back, runners advance one base. If there were any on base. Otherwise, it's just a routine ground out to second, and the inning is over. So, one, two, three inning for Kevin Apier. And that's another reason why I picked this game. I was hoping for a pitching duel so the game wouldn't take three hours to get through. But we'll, you know, take it as it lies. But I thought it would be easier to show it if it wasn't a 12 to 9 slugfest. All right. Felix Jose will lead off in the bottom of the second for the Royals against Roger Clemens. We had a 5-2-6, so we go over to our column 5, which is the propensity for walks. 5-2-6. 5-2 is a 27. So that could be a flyout of some sort. 5-2 is a 27, because the low numbers are walks. 5-2 is a 27. 5-6 is a 4, a total of 31. So we go to column 5, 31. It happens to be a flyout to center field. So fly out to center field, and Felix Jose is out of there. Out number one. All right, here's Brett Main. We're still in column five, five, three, three. Five, three is a three, so that means it's a potential walk because of the low number. Five, three on Clemens is a three, total of six. Six is an, exactly going to be a base on balls, so it will be a walk. Clemens would have had to have a two or a one to prevent this from getting to a six because starting out at a three, you're going to add one or two to it. You can avoid the walk, but once you get start adding three, fours, and fives, you get into these walks. So it is a walk for Brett Main for out or first base runner, rather, for the, Bru for the uh, Royals. And here's Kevin McReynolds. Now we're in column four again, four, four, five. So we can flip back to column four. Four, four, five. Four, four, five. And let's see what we got. Four, four, five. Four, four for McReynolds is a two. Now the infield's halfway because it's run on first. Keep that in mind. So we're in this halfway section right here. Four, four is a two. 
four, five is the shortstop. And in that case, it's Luis Rivera. He is a three. Rivera, look at his card. At shortstop, he is a three. So we add the three to the four, four result, which was a two. So we get a two plus the three is a five. Total of five with the infield halfway. Two through six, second to first double play. So it is going to be a double play, six, four, three to end the inning. So nicely turned there by Rivera, Fletcher, and Vaughn. Turn the double play to end the inning. So at the end of two complete, it is 2-0 Boston, thanks to the home run from Andre Dawson. We start at the top of the third, and Rivera, after making that fine play, will lead off the inning. 6-3-5. So we're back to column six. And maybe, let me try something here. Maybe the way, potentially the way I've got this set up, that the trifold might actually work just as well. And instead of flipping the book around, maybe I can just slide the trifold around. So maybe let's try this. Let's see if this works any better. The roll was a 6-3-5, so maybe this is going to be better so I'm not flipping pages left and right. Maybe that actually is going to work better. All right, so 6-3-5. Hopefully it does anyway. I'm hoping it shows up. Uh, make sure my focus is still okay. There's a slight, I know there's a slight little light right there, but I can't have everything, unfortunately. All right, so Rivera, 6-3 is a 36. All right, we already figured out whatever you add to 36 is going to put you right here, 37 to 41, so it is a strikeout. So Rivera is out on strikes. Now the only thing it might do is it might make a little noise because I'd be rolling on the table on here rather than on that soft padded uh, chart book. So I'm going to go ahead and start rolling on. Well, let's roll on here and see what happens. Here's Scott Fletcher. He grounded to third his first time. I guess it's not too loud. 3-3-6. Three, three, okay, the result is 3-3-6. Three, three, so we slide back over here to our column 3. 3, 3, 6, and we slide up to our column 3. 3, 3 on Fletcher is a 32. 3, 6 on Apier is a 3. That's a total of 35. 35 in column 3 is a double to center field. So it's a double to center field for Scott Fletcher. Double for Scott Fletcher. One out double. Now, since we rolled a blue six, that meant it went to Kevin Apier's six row, which was a higher number of three. Had we had a one here, added it to the 32, that would have been a 33, and that would have been a line out the center. So it, not being here and being down here caused that to be a double. But Scott Fletcher will take it and run around second with one out. Here now is Billy Hatcher. Six, two, four. 624 624 62 on Hatcher is an 8 64 on Apier is a 1 total of 9 and a 9 is a single to center field runners advance one base run on second may try and score and defense may try for runner at home all right well that, since this is kind of a demonstration thing we're going to try it we're going to try everything that we can do whether it makes sense in baseball or not we're going to try it just to see the game engine working. So we know Billy Hatcher has the single, and we know Fletcher's at third, but he's going to try to come home. All right. So now the defense has to decide if they're going to throw home. If, throw, if throwing home, roll die versus runner speed. If die is higher, he is out. All right. Fletcher's speed. Let's look at Scott Fletcher's speed. Scott Fletcher's speed is this number here. He's a four. So the only way he would be out is on a five or a six. So the odds are, if I was playing this game for real, probably would just throw to second and keep Hatcher at first base. But, but, um, let's see here. If no throw home, runner scores, others held one base. All right. Die is higher, he is out. If not higher, he scores. Runner on first goes to third. 
That means if the guy was already on first, it doesn't say anything about the batter moving up. It just says about the runner on first, but there was no runner on first. So here it looks like there's no, no penalty for trying because the batter's not going to get all the way to third on that. He would get to second, but he wouldn't get to third. But the runner on first does go to third. So it seemed like there's maybe a slight missing there um, interpretation because it doesn't say what the batter would do. Apparently the batter just stays at first base, I'm guessing. That's what it says here. That's what I'm going by. But we need a five or a six to get Scott Fletcher at the plate. We don't. Scott Fletcher will score on that single from Billy Hatcher, and the Red Sox now lead it three to nothing over the Royals. So Kevin Apier's getting knocked around a bit. All right, that brings up Mike Greenwell. He singled and scored his first trip. Two, three, four. So we go to column two. Back over here to column two. And we get a two, three, four. Two, three is a 50. Two, four is a two. 52 in column two. 52 in column two is a ground out pitcher to first. There is an asterisk here. There is an asterisk right here. If the letter Y appears beside the result, disregard the original result and treat it as a chopper to the infield. But there is no Y there, so ignore that part. This says grounder, ground out pitcher to first. Now, there, this is where you get your injuries, but across from that result, it is blank. So there is no injury. There is no injury because there's no. it would have a number of games across from it, but it wasn't. It says runners advance one base. So it's it's the only play was was for the pitcher to throw to first base. So that's out number two. Hatcher does take second base. So now we have Hatcher at second with two outs and Andre Dawson, the batter, who homered his first time up. So Dawson is up. He homered his first chance. We get a 3-5-6. Three, 3-5-6. Six. Three, six. Column 3, row 5 on Dawson is a 3. Column 3, row 6 is a 3 here. Total of 6 in column 3. And that is a short fly out to center field to end the inning. So Boston does score a run. But Dawson is out on the fly out to center field to end the inning. And we go to the bottom of the third. Boston ahead of Kansas City, three to nothing. And I hope I'm going slow enough. I almost feel like I'm not, but I'm, hopefully I am. But again, I don't want to have this thing last three hours either. So I'm trying to go as slow as possible. If there's any questions, of course, leave them in the comments and I will respond. Or others who are experts at this game can respond as well. All right, let's roll for Brian McRae's at bat. We get a one, six, two. So we're gonna slide over here to column one. One, six, two. One, six is a 45. One, two is a one, total of 46. So we go to column one, 46. It says 46 to 50, strike out or come back to the pitcher. With second and short playing halfway, scores this as a ground ball back to the pitcher. Uh, but since they're not halfway because the bases are empty, it becomes a strikeout. So when nobody's on base, that turns into a strikeout. If somebody was on base to the point, you know, somebody on first basically to the point where they were trying for a double play, then they could be halfway and it would be a ground ball to the pitcher and not a strikeout. But in this case, it's a strikeout with the bases clean. So McCray strikes out for one out, and that's going to bring up Jose Leaned. Six four one. All right, so now we bring in column six. Six four on Jose Leend is a twenty one. Six one is a two on Clemens for a total of twenty three. And twenty three says long single to the outfield. The blue die tells you what fielder it is. So it went to left field. One and two means left field. So it's a long single to left field. Batter may try for a double. Roll red and white dice for umpire's call. If the red die is a one to four, he's safe with a double. If the red die is a five, he is still safe if the white die is not higher than the speed. So lean speed is a three. So even if you roll a five on the red die, as long as the white die is three or less, he'll be safe. If, you, if the red die is a six, safe as white die is higher than the outfielder's arm. Well, in this case, the left fielder's arm is Greenwell. And we go back to Greenwell. And his arm is a two. So as long as the white die is a two, or greater than two, he'll be safe. So the odds are pretty good he can make it. So we're gonna go ahead and roll for it. Red, one to four on the red die, he's automatically safe. 
and he is, it's a two. So a double for Jose Lind. So he's on second base with one out for Greg Gagne. So Gagne is back up to the plate with one out and leaned at second. Five, five, six, column five. Five, five is a five with a plus sign. We'll get to that if it comes up. Well, we'll talk about it anyway, but we'll really get to it if it does come up. So five, five with a plus sign. Five, six for Clemens is a four. That's a total of nine in column five. Nine in column five says base on balls. If the pitcher has raised number besides column five grade, and the result is six, seven, eight, nine, based on balls. If die is higher than the number score is based on balls, if not higher, counts two balls. So control pitchers have little numbers, raised numbers, beside in their column five grade, but Clemens does not, so we ignore that. It's just going to be a walk. So it will be a walk to Gagne. That puts runners at first and second. Now the plus sign talks about stealing bases. But with a runner at second, he's blocked. So we cannot steal a base, so we do ignore the plus sign at this point in time. But had there not been a runner on second base, then you would go to the steals. And there's several ways you can do the steals, depending on how you want to handle it. I'll show that in the fold-up book. Stealing base option, you can use the catcher and pitcher hold rating, or you can simply... Use the catcher rating. Depends on how you want to do it. But the plus sign basically means he's got to steal. And he's either going to be safe or out. If it's a asterisk, means he can steal. But if he doesn't steal or doesn't not successful on the roll, he just holds. So he's not going to be out. But in this case, like, like I said, runner on second is blocking him. So he can't do that. We just ignore that result. So runners at first and second with one out for Keith Miller. And we get a 6-6-1. Six, six, That's not good for the pitcher. We get that 66. That's a 60. And a 1 over here is a 2. Total of 62 in column 6. 62 in column 6 is a double into the corner. Runners advance two bases. It says with two outs, runner with three speed scores from first, but there are not two outs. So Gagne has to hold at third base. Lean will score on the double from Keith Miller. And the Royals have cut the lead to 2-1, to one, and they've got runners at second and third with one out and a threat going. And here's Wally Joyner. The infield for the Red Sox now is going to come in to try to choke that runoff. And that can affect ground balls and, and so forth. So the infield is in, but certain results, that means it's going to narrow the range of the infielder and more base hits will get through on this column four results. So let's see what happens. Joiner, five, we're in column five. So five, five, one. Five, five is a 20 on Joiner. And a five, one is a two there for Clemens. That's a 22. 22 is a base on balls. Runners advanced if forced. Well, nobody's forced. It's just going to load the bases. Now, it also says check M of the action chart for further action. Well, the action chart column M. We can go to that even though the bases are loaded because it's not talking about steel. We're talking about potential wild pitches or balks or pickoffs. So we will be going to this chart. And that's what it says. Check column M on the action chart for further action. So we go here to column number M or letter M, roll all three dice and see what result comes up. But we're gonna add up the red and white two through 12 to see what happens. It's a, it's a two, one one is a two. So we got a two, it's a pickoff with an asterisk there. So we go over here to where it says pick off asterisk. Same as pick off above, but pick off attempt is made on lead runner. So that's interesting. They'll be picking up, trying to pick off the runner on third base, Greg Gagne. All right, it says attempt to pick off. If blue die is higher than pitcher's hold rating, runner gets back safely. If not higher, runner is picked off first base, but this actually goes to third because of the star there. All right, the blue die is a two. The hold rating is a 2 on Clements. It's the same. It's not higher. It says if blue die is higher than pitcher's hold rating, running gets back safely. If not, he's picked off. So in this case, he's picked off. So they actually pick off Greg Gagne off third base. Kind of interesting how that happened, but that's just the way the book says it. So they pick off Gagne. And normally when it's a pickoff on third, it's usually the catcher doing that. But this time Clemens saw something, stepped off and threw to third. And they're going to pick off Gagne 1-5. to five as Cooper snuck in behind Gagne at third base and picked him off. 
So now runners are now only at first and second with two outs now. And at the plate is George Brett after Joyner walks. So now George, Bra George Brett is up with two outs and runners at first and second. Clemens trying to get out of the mess. 4-1, that's a fielding check. 4-1 is an 11, which means it's a possible error. 4-5 is the shortstop. Shortstop is Rivera, and his uh, number is a 3. So Rivera is a 3, total of 14. When you get a 14, and the infield in this case is back with two outs, 14 is 12 to 16, possible error. So we bring in Luis Rivera's card, just to show, make it easier. Luis Rivera. And we look at his number above his rating at short. He is a 44. So we need to roll a 45 or higher for this to be an error. We do not. 16. So he does not make the error. He makes the play. Technically, the play is to first because the runners are going to advance, but that was a third out. So end of the inning, but the Royals are stuck to just one run. So that pickoff really, really pretty much doomed them at that point. And George Brett is out to end the inning. So we go to the fourth inning. Score still 3-1, to one, or now 3-1 to one Boston. Kevin Apier is back out. His fatigue, he can face 28 batters, or he can do it by the innings. It's a 7. But I, go, I like to use the batter's face, which is right here, 28. So obviously in the fourth inning, we're not anywhere close to that. He's only faced... 13 batters so far, so we're nowhere near that. So Mo Vaughn's going to lead off. He flew to center field his first chance. And we get a 5 6 6. So we're going to column 5. All right, 5 6 is a 3 with an F. That, that letter means action chart. Anytime you see a capital letter like that, it means action chart possible. So 3F, 3 is what we got. And a 6 6, or 5 6 rather, on Apier is a 4. So that total is a seven. Seven means we get a walk. So there will be a walk, and since he did reach base, that means we're going to the action chart F, which is talking about stolen base pickoff. And you're saying, why are they sending him there? Well, he did have four steals, so you don't think a move on necessarily being a, a threat to steal, but in this case, he could possibly be. But he could also get picked off. He could get caught stealing. A lot of things could happen. Could be a pass ball. I mean, there's all sorts of things that could happen. So we're looking at row or column F and the red and white die total of four. So column F of four, column four and F says SBE. SBE says stolen base plus possible throwing error on the catcher. Roll against catcher's error rating. If the roll is higher, all runners advance. All right, so we're looking at the catcher, Brett Main, and see if he uncorks one into center field. His error rating is a 54, so we have to roll. If it's a 55 or higher, he uncorks this into center field. If it's 54 or less, then that means that the second baseman Lean was able to corral it. It's a 56, so it does go into center field for an error because it's higher than the 54. So move on is going to walk. He's going to steal second. And he's going to go to third on the throwing error by Brett Main. So all of a sudden, move on's at third base with nobody out. And that's what the action chart can provide, is action. All right, so run on third with nobody out. They're going to bring the infield in, try to choke the run off, if at all possible. Von Calderon is up. His first time up, he hit that 3-6 result for the lefty-righty split and line to short. So he's going to try to find something else this time. 2-1-5. All right, so in column 2. So 2-1 is a 29. 2-5 is a 2. Total of 31 in column 2. 31 in column 2 is ground out pitcher to first. With the infield in, any ball hit to first, second, third, or short bounces through for an infield single. But it was hit to the pitcher. It was not hit to the infielder. So that's the danger of playing the infield in is they can get through on hits. But in this case, since the total for the result was 33, 33 relates to the pitcher. So it's a ground to the pitcher. It does say three-game injury. So we'll go ahead and play it like an injury. We'll do it as it says. So the ground out is the first for the out number one, but now Yvonne Calderon is injured. So we need a new replacement to be the DH for Boston. So I look at their bench. Let's see who they want to use as a DH. They don't have a whole lot. We're going to go with Carlos Quintana. 
So Carlos Quintana will take over for Calderon as the designated hitter since Calderon just got injured. Now, of course, you're doing ass plate or something, then you may not want to do injuries, but for this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the injuries since it's just a one game. And so the runner had to hold because the infield was in. But had that ball get, been hit to any other infielder besides the, the pitcher, they would have snuck through for a hit. So the infield's still in against Scott Cooper. 1-5-2. One, 1-5 one, is a 5. 1-2 one, is a 1. Total of 6. And anything 2 through 6 in column 1 or 2 is a strikeout. And for newer players, you will remember this pretty quickly. So it is a strikeout for out number 2 and Apier. Now, one batter away from getting out of the mess. And he's got to get by Tony Pena. He's got to get by Tony Pena. We haven't hit the ballpark yet. We've got to hit the shaded areas in orange to go to the ballpark. That hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it will. Two, two, three. Two, two, and that's what we talked about, what I talked about on the chat I had with Replay Gamer. Anytime you get a 2-2 two, two and there's an 11 there, you can't stop an 11. 11 is going to be an automatic base hit. That's where... He was talking about other games where the, the results are mixed, where this one's kind of standard. Anytime you get an 11. Now, the better hitters are going to have 11 here. The lesser hitters are not. So, to be fair, there were some people that didn't have 11s here. But he does. It's an 11. And Apier 2-3 is a 1, total of 12. But a 12 says it's a single to left field. So, you can see 11 on here. Anything you add to that is going to put you in this single area right here. Now, there is a caveat. If a pitcher has an asterisk beside his column 2 grade, results 12 to 16 are changed to a pop out to first. Now, Apier, had we rolled a 2-1, a he would have that asterisk, and that would have been a pop out to first. But the 2-3 doesn't have that, so it stays a single for Tony Pena. And that's going to score the run. So the Red Sox put up another run, lead it 4-1. to one. But had that blue die been a 1 and been here, that asterisk would have changed that result to a pop out to first. So oh so close, but yet so far. And here's Luis Rivera, the shortstop, struck out his first chance. There are two down bases empty. Five, six, one. Five, six is a 20. Five, one is a two. Total of 22 in column number five. And 22 in column five is a, is a walk. And it also says we're going to action chart M. Pena will go to second base, so that might block any steal attempts he might have. Let's check column M. But actually, column M talks about pickoffs and wild pitches, so we will roll for it. Get a seven. Seven says wild pitch. Wild pitch here is a seven. So it says if blue die is higher than wild pitch rating, all runs advance. Well, the blue die is a four. The wild pitch rating here is a three, so it is a wild pitch. Kevin Apier has uncorked one. And now runners are at second and third. All this with two outs. Back to the top of the order for Scott Fletcher. He doubled his last time up. Apier trying to keep his team in the game. Has to get Scott Fletcher out. 3-2-5. Three, 3-2 two, three, two is a 2. 3-5 is a 2. Total of 4 in column 3. It's a short fly to right field. And he does, in fact, end the inning. But the Red Sox score another run, take a 4-1 to one lead, and with Roger Clemens on the mound, that might be a little hard for the Royals to overcome. We shall see. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Felix Jose is your batter. So Felix Jose flew to center field his first chance. And we get a 2-5-4. Two, 2-5 two, is a 4 Two four is a one total of five, and we already said two through six is a strikeout in columns one and two. So Felix Jose is out of there. Here's Brett Main. Three four two. Three four are your possible rare play chances. Anytime you see fifty seven and three four, that means it's a rare play chance opportunity possible. Three four is a fifty seven. Three two is a two total of fifty nine. Column three. Go to column three. Let's bring it up here a little bit higher. Column three, a 59, says rare play question mark. Roll one die. If it's even, you use the play result. If it's odd, we go to the rare playbook. If it's a one, then we go to the ballpark card. So basically, a three or a five sends us to the rare playbook. 
two, four, six, we go to the dribbler to the mound. One, we go to the stadium card. It's a one, so we're going to the stadium card. See if it's a pop out or a foul ball. And we're going to re-roll according to Kaufman Stadium. If we re-roll and get a one or a two, that means he pops out. It's fielded by the infielder for a pop out. If it's three to six, it's going to go foul into the stands and Brett Main gets a chance to bat again. It's a two. It means it's a foul out. Now, the question is, who caught the foul out? Well, it doesn't really say who catches the foul out. So, um, I guess you could. It, it may or may not matter to you who does. Um, you would think it's either the first baseman or the third baseman. Because that's where the foul, or it could be the catcher too. So, my rule of thumb, I just come up with it on the fly. A one or two means it's the third baseman. Three or four means it's the first baseman. I'm sorry, let's do it do all the way around. One to two is a catcher because two is a position for a catcher. So one to two is a catcher. Three to four is a first baseman because the first baseman is a three in fielding. And five to six is the third baseman because five is the third baseman's number. So one to two is a catcher. Three to four is first base. Five to six is third base. It's five. So he fouls out to the third baseman, Scott Cooper. I just made it up on the fly. I have no idea if that's... You know, the way you're supposed to do it or not. The book doesn't really say. I think it's the first time I've had that result so in a long, long time. So if there's a scientific method to it, somebody let me know. But I just came with that on the fly. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. It's out. That's what's, That's the big thing is the out. If you keep fielding stats, then it matters. Here's McReynolds, 4-6-1. 4-6 is a 17. And a 4-1 means we're going to the first baseman, Mo Vaughn. Mo Vaughn's defensive rating at first base is a 4. Not very good. He's below average. So we add the 4 to the 17. We get a 21. Column 4. They were back because nobody's on base. 21. Single off the fielder's glove. But there is an asterisk there. When there's an asterisk, that means... We come down here to the umpire chart, and that's what it says here. Asterisk, the asterisk is right here. It's, it's a little footnote right here, umpire options on play 20 and 21. So we come down here to the umpire chart, and the result is a 21. So we roll 1d6. If it's a 1 or a 6, he's out. If it's anything else, he's safe. It's a 4, it means he's safe. He beat it out for an infield hit. So McReynolds beats out an infield hit. And the inning continues because Mo Vaughn was a poor fielder. If he had been a better fielder, it would have been an out. But since his range is limited, McReynolds will reach. Here's McCray. 2-6. And we're going to finally go to the ballpark chart for the first time. 2-6. Takes us to the shaded area. 55. So we go to column 2. And let's see. 3 is Clemens. 2-3 is a, is a 1. So we're going to add 1 to the 55, make it a 56, which is right here, looping drive to the outfield. The blue die also tells you who the fielder is. It's a 3, so it means we're center fielder. So it's a looping drive to the center fielder. The number, in the, the raised number here is a 5. That is not stationary. When you do the, when you use the ballpark effects, this number will change. That number will change based on the column two result here. Looping drive to the outfield, we re-roll one die. And if the die number is a one, it becomes a two. If the die number is two, that changes to a three, and so forth. So let's see if that Coffin Stadium might take this hit away from Brian McCray. We'll see. It's a one, so that means it's changed that raised number down now to a two. It was a five, it's dropped to a two. The outfielder is the center fielder. Center fielder for... Boston is Hatcher. His range is a three. He will now catch this ball because the raised number was dropped from a five to a two, and his three beats the two. Had the state of five, it would have been a base hit. But since it dropped to a two, thanks to the ballpark, his three is able to top that, and he's able to make the catch. So Billy Hatcher, able to get it, and thanks to Kauffman Stadium, he was able to make that catch. And that ends the inning. So four innings are in the books. And it's four to one, Boston. Apier's going to stay out there. He is their ace. So 
Even though he's had some tough luck on some rolls, he's going to stay out there. And let's see here. Already up to an hour, but that's okay. I don't mind this. Uh, I may take this off right here and see if I can get that glare out of there. Maybe that will help. I don't know. We'll see. I won't know till I look at it. All right, so, and of course, guy makes a nice defensive play. He's going to lead off the next inning. It just happens that way. So now we get a 6-4-4. Six, 6-4 four, four. Six, four on Hatcher is a 41. 6-4 on Apier is a 1. Total of 42 in column 6. So we come over here to column 6. A total of 42 is a solid hit to left field. Solid hit to left field. Runner advances one base on a single. Chance for extra bases. Roll one die against the outfielder's defensive rating. Well, this talks about runner. does not talk about the hitter. So the hitter only gets the base. That's it. The hitter is going to get the single, but there's nobody on base to worry about advancing. So don't have to worry about that. It's a leadoff single for Hatcher. He's two for three. And now that brings up Mike Greenwell. Greenwell is one for two on the game. Infield is halfway. We had a 1-5-2, so a chance for maybe a strikeout here. 1-5 is a 5, 1-2 is a 1, total of 6, so there you go, it is a strikeout. Remember, anything 2-6 to six in columns 1 or 2, you get the strikeout automatically. So Greenwell is out on strikes, and it brings up Andre Dawson. His two-run homer in the first kind of got set the tone for the whole thing. 4-2-3, so we're in the fielding area. 4-2 is a 2. 4-3 is the third baseman, and in this case, third baseman is Keith Miller, and Keith Miller is a 4. So we get a 2 plus the 4 from Keith Miller, and makes it a 6. So we go to column 4, infield halfway, and a 6. 2 through 6, second to first double play, but when you're on the 6, you get an asterisk here. And that means it takes us to the pivot chart. It says here, when you get the asterisk, come down here to the footnote, Double play pivot option on plays six and seven. Well, we got a six. So we're going to come over here to the pivot opportunities and we're going to check the pivot of the defender. Well, if Miller makes the play at third, the pivot guy is Jose Leaned at second base. So we bring in Jose Leaned. His defensive rating is a two. So since his, he's the pivot man, his defensive rating is a two, that, and the result was a six, that means a one through five on the next. A D6 roll means a double play. The only way it's a fielder's choice is if we roll a six. We get a one, so it is a double play. Double play does stand. So it's double play stands. Andre Dawson hits into the double play. It goes five, four, three, and the inning's over. So that takes care of the Red Sox here in the inning. Score still remains four to one. So we go to the bottom of the fifth. All right, bottom of the fifth we go. Jose leaned, will lead off. Leaned, single, uh, doubled and scored his first chance. We get a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. How about that? Triple fours. Jose Lean, 4-4 four, four is a 16. 4-4 four, four for Clemens is the shortstop Rivera. And Rivera, as we've seen before, I think his rating has come up once before, but he is a three at shortstop. So we're going to add the three to the 16 for a total of 19. The infield is back because nobody's on base. So that gives us a total of 19. 19 says grounder out at first. Had that been a 20, had he been a four rated shortstop instead of a three rated shortstop, that number would have bumped to a 20 and we'd have gone to the umpire chart. But since it's a 19, he was able to make the play without needing the umpire and it's a ground out to short for out number one. So Jose Leand is retired. Here's Greg Gagne. Clemens to Gagne, 164. 16 is a 45, and we've already seen with the bases empty, a 45 is a strikeout. So he will strike out for out number two. And that brings up Keith Miller, top of the order. And Miller doubled his last time up. RBI double for Miller, his last chance. 4-1-3. 4-1 is an 18. 4-3 is the third baseman, Cooper. Scott Cooper, his defensive rating at third base is a 3. So we add 3 to the 18, and that's a total of 21. 
21 is a single off the fielder's glove, but it's got the asterisk, so we go to the umpire chart. But this time, again, one to six, he's out. Or one or six, he's out. Anything other two through five, he's safe. It's a four, so he beats it out. So Keith Miller able to beat that play. And the inning continues on the single from Keith Miller. So two down for Wally Joyner. And Joyner has grounded to third and walked. Six, three, and a five. Six, three is a 16. Had we rolled a six, two, we'd be on a split chance, but six, three is the 16. And six, five is a four, total of 20. 20 in column six is a deep fly to right, and the inning is over. So five innings are in the books here at Kauffman Stadium with Boston leading four to one. Kevin Apier coming back out. We'll face Mo Vaughn. Mo Vaughn. Two, four, two. Two, four is a 60, and there is a number above it, but that number is, does not have the orange around it, so that number is static. It will not change. So most likely this is going to be a hit. The defender would have to have a five range to stop this. And the defender goes by the blue die. So we come down here to a 60. Come down here to a 60 in column number two. When you add what the picture has, it changes from a 61 to a 65. The blue die was a two, which means it goes to the left fielder. Left fielder in this case is Kevin McReynolds. And I don't think he has a five arm, but we'll verify it. Kevin McReynolds only has a two arm, so he cannot get to it. Since he cannot get to it, if outfielder's defense rate is not higher than the raised number, the ball falls in for a double. Runners advance two bases. With less than two outs, batter stretches. Let's bring it up here so you can see it better. If less than two outs, batter stretches hit to a triple if third base is open and his speed is higher than the outfielder's arm. Okay, how about that? Mo Vaughn's speed, though, is a two right here. And McReynolds' arm is a two. It's not higher. It's the same. So it will not be a triple. It'll simply be a leadoff double for Mo Vaughn. But Mo Vaughn almost got the triple, but not quite. So here comes Carlos Quintana. He took over as the DH when... Calderon had the injury. Three, two, five. Three, two is a two. Three, five is a two. Total of four. That is a short fly to right. And anyone on third base may tag up, but there's no provision for a runner on second to tag up. So it's just a short fly to right for one away. Wasn't deep enough to do anything with it. One down for Scott Cooper. Two, six, and then we're going to the ballpark card again, right here. Raise numbers of three, but that, that will change based on what we roll on this die right here. We keep the three because that tells us who fields it. It's a two, so that means it changes to a, well, it stays a three. It was a three, it's going to stay a three because the die roll of two makes that a three. So the ballpark has no effect on this one. So we come down here to the 56. Let's move this out of the way. Come down here to the 55, and then you add whatever you add um, to the batter or from the pitcher. It's going to make it a 56 through 60. The blue die is a 3, which means a center fielder. So we're checking to see if the center fielder for the Royals has a range that's greater than 3. Center fielder for the Royals is Brian McRae. Brian McRae's range is a 5. So McRae will go ahead and take away that hit. He can cover a lot of ground out there. And so that result right there exhibits that. It's a fly to center field. Now, the run on second base, what can he do? Let's see what it gets here. Run on second and third advance one speed, one base if speed is greater than outfielder's arm. Well, McRae's outfielder arm, let's check his arm. He's got good range. His outfield arm is a two, which is not very good, but Mo Vaughn's only a two speed. It's the same, it's not greater. So. Vaughn cannot move up to third base. He's got to stay at second base. So because of his slow speed, it keeps him at second base. There are now two outs for Tony Pena. And I have no idea how this is going to show up on video. First time trying it, so bear with me. Trying to... 
I got a feeling once I start playing this game, I'm starting to go a little bit faster than I probably should, but hopefully you guys are seeing it. Here's Tony Pena. Like I said, I don't want a three hour video either. So, uh, 351. 351. 35 is a three. 31 is a one. Total of four in column three. That's another short fly to right field, and the inning is over. So, the leadoff double from Mo Vaughn does not come home to roost, and the score is still four to one. And George Brett will lead off for the Royals. Brett is 0 for 2. It's ground to short and flown to left. Get a 6 2 3. 6 2 for Brett is an 8. 6 3 is a 2 for a 10. 10 is a single to center field for George Brett. So he gets his first hit of the game. Does Mr. Brett. He leads off with a single. Brings up Felix Jose, the right fielder. Infield is halfway. 6 5 4. 6 5 is a 36. When we've already seen anything, 36 in column 6 is a strikeout because whatever you add to it puts you in this 37 to 41 range. So, shortcut 36 is a strikeout, much like the 2 through 6 in columns 1 and 2 are strikeouts. So, Felix Jose down on strikes. And that's going to bring up Brett Main. Infield still halfway. 2 4 3. 2-4 is a 2. 2-3 two, is a 1. Total of 3. And again, anything 2 through 6 in columns 1 and 2 is a strikeout. And so Clemens gets the strikeout for out number 2. Brett's still at first base. Can't go anywhere. 2 down for Kevin McReynolds. Infield now back fully. 5-1-5. Five, 5-1 one, five. Five, one is a 4. 5-5 five, five is a 4. Total of 8. Eight says, base on balls with bases full count as two balls. Well, the bases are not full, so the walk will stand. And George Brett will now move to second base. So runners at first and second with two down. For Brian McRae, he's 0 for 2. Struck out and flew to center, so he's due. 5-2-3. 5-2 is a 27. 5-3 is a 3. Total of 30 in column 5. 30 in column 5 is a fly to center, and the inning is over. So nothing doing there for the Royals. And we go to the top of the 7th. And this is where we start looking at fatigue possibilities for Apier. He has faced 26 batters. He can face 28. So bullpen activity for the Royals is imminent. Let's look at the lineup for the uh, Red Sox, they do have Greenwell and Vaughn coming up in a couple batters that are left-handers. So with that in mind, for the Royals, Billy Brewer, a lefty, is loosing in the bullpen. So he will be loosing and getting ready for potentially when Mike Greenwell comes up. So first is Luis Rivera, 1-6-5. And again, a 1-6. Generally speaking, the 1-6 for most batters, has 45. A lot of batters don't have it, but a lot of batters have 45 in there if they strike out a decent amount. So Rivera will strike out to start the seventh. Flips the order over to Scott Fletcher. Fletcher one for three with a double and a run scored. Three three four. Three three is a 32. Three four is a one. Total of 33 in column three. 33 in column three is a line out to center field. So it was a good thing that he had a one here. Because if we had gotten down to the 2 or the 3, that would have changed this number to a 34 or a 35, and that would have been a double. But since he has a 1 here, 1s in column 3 can take away a lot of hits. And he did it right there. It's a line out to center for out number 2. So your better pitchers are going to have a lot of 1s in the uh, column 3 there to take away those hits. Here's Billy Hatcher. 6-5, and that's a 36. So automatically it's a strikeout for Kevin Apier. And we're going to cap Kevin Apier right there at seven innings. He faced 29 batters, so he's good to go. Strikeout stands. Didn't matter if he was tired or not. The strikeout still would have stood. Still would have held up. So strikeout is done there to make it a four to one or keep it a four to one game as we go to the seventh inning stretch. And I'm going to stretch myself, pause the video and stretch, and then come back and finish the ball game. All right, we're ready for the bottom of the seventh. Roger Clemens is getting close to his fatigue as well. He can face 27 batters. 
Right now, he's faced a total of 25. So, in the bullpen for the Red Sox, loosening is Tony Fossus. Now, I picked him specifically because he is a lefty specialist. And he's got this shaded columns here. So, this is one of the rare cases where a pitcher has actually has a rating for splits. So, if he's facing a lefty, we're going to use the top three rows. And if we're facing a righty, we use the bottom three rows. So, one and two combines into row one. Three and four combines into row two, and five and six on the die combines to row three. But Fossus is loosening because after the bottom two players are in the order, Wally Joyner, bat, a lefty, bats fourth this inning. So you want to get him ready for Wally Joyner if possible. All right, so Clemens facing Jose Lean to start the bottom of the seventh. We get a four, six, three. That's a fielding check. Four, six is a one. 4-3 is the third baseman, Cooper. Cooper, his rating at third base is a 3. So we had the 3 of the 1s, total of 4. And anything 2 through 11, it's a, just a regular old ground out, nothing special. So it's a 5-3 to three ground out. And that brings up Greg Gagne. Gagne is up. 6-3-3. Three, three. 6-3 for Gagne is a 31. 6-3 for Clemens is a 2 for a total of 33. We go to 33 in column 6, and it's a pop out to second base. If the pitcher had a K, it would be a strikeout, but he does not have... Some of the years Clemens had high K ratings, he'd have Ks over here. But he does not have that in this situation, so it's simply going to be a pop out, pop out to second base for out number 2. And it flips the order over to Keith Miller. Joyner is on deck, so if Miller reaches, they will pull Clemens and go to Fossus. 5-6-6. Five, 5-6 six, six. Five, six is a 1. 5-6 is a 4. Total of 5 in column 5. 5 in column 5 is a grounder to 3rd. With runners on and first base open, it's a walk, but nobody's on. So it's just a ground ball to 3rd, and the inning is over. So that's going to do it for Clemens. Both starters are going to go seven innings and be capped there. And now we'll go to the bullpens for both teams. And for the Brewers, I'm sorry, for the Royals, they will go to a Brewer, Billy Brewer, a lefty. He is not rated for splits on his lefties. And Greenwell is not rated for any splits. But if he roll the 3-6 result, that would turn into an out. Whereas against a right-hander, he would get a base hit. So Brewer, let's update the score sheet. Brewer now takes over. April went seven innings. So Brewer will be on to face Mike Greenwell in the top of the eighth. Four to one, Red Sox. Three, four, and the first chance we get is a rare play. 57, chance for a rare play. So once again, I'm going to roll the die if it's even or odd. It's odd, so we're going to the rare playbook for the first time. So we go to our rare play book. And the rare plays are excellent in this game. And they're also done by base running situations. So in our case, the bases are empty. So the base is empty, we're going to the base is empty rare play chart. Roll two D6s. I'll roll the blue just in case it's needed. So we get a 10. That's what we're really looking for. I'll keep the 3 to the side. So 10, not only is it base is empty situation, it's the out situation is also factored into play. Nobody's out. Bases are empty, nobody out, and it's a 10. So with nobody out, we go here to the 0. Ball 4 is in the dirt. Batter runs to first base on base on balls, gets away from the catcher. Roll one die against the pitcher's wild pitch rating. If die is higher, batter continues to second on the wild pitch. So that's what we'll use the blue die for. So three, is it higher than the wild pitch rating? Yes, it is. Billy Brewer's got a zero wild pitch rating. So this is going to be scored a walk and a wild pitch. So when he's got a zero wild pitch rating, that means he's got a high propensity for wild pitches. So in this case, Greenwell will walk and reach on the wild pitch. So bringing the lefty there didn't exactly work out too well for the Royals. He's at second base with nobody out for Andre Dawson. 655. Five. What well, he got a break because the 65 is a 36, which as we've seen in the past is a strikeout. 
And that's the thing with this game. Certain roles you will remember. You won't have to check the chart every time. It's sort of like APA, where you start remembering some of those roles. Like, you know, a 13 in APA is a strikeout. Well, in column six, a 36 is always a strikeout regardless. There's no, there are no exceptions. 100% strikeout. There is no exception. Or there are no exceptions. Doesn't matter what the pitcher does. I could be pitching and strike him out. So here comes Move on. He doubled his last time up. 3-6 now here. This is interesting because Billy Brewer does not have splits on his card. Mo Vaughn does not have splits on his card, but the 3-6 hit the split. 47. So I tell you, it hits it when you least expect it. So when you get here, 47, you add the 6, the 3-6 result from Brewer. To, it's a 2, makes it a 49. Come down here, 49 is 58 through, I'm sorry, 48 through 52. So it reverses what's here. So this time against a left-handed pitcher, it's a line out. So it's a line out second base. And there's something else even that might even be a double play since there's a runner on second base. So let's bring this up a little closer so you can see it. It says here, leaping catch by second baseman with runner on second and less than two outs possible double play. Roll one die against the second baseman's defensive rating. If the die is higher, the run on second is doubled off. All right, second baseman defensive rating is Jose Leaned. And Jose Leaned is the best second baseman you can, well, not the best. He's second best. He's got a two. So Jose Leaned has a two. So we roll one D6. If we get a one or two, then there's no double play. If we get three, four, five, or six, that means the runner, Greenwell, is doubled off. It's a two, so he's not doubled off. He got back just in time. So alert base running there by Greenwell keeps him from getting doubled off. But there are now two outs. Runner still at second. And Carlos Quintana is your batter. And I think that's going to be it for Brewer. They're going to, against the righty Quintana, they're going to pull him. This is not 2020, so he does not have a three batter minimum rule. They want to bring in a right hander. And they're going to bring in the Flash, Tom Flash Gordon. He's going to come on. Started 14 games, relieved 34 of them. So Tom Gordon is going to come on. And face the right hander. Quintana. Neither one of them are rated for splits, but again, if you get that 3-6, that'll come up. So we're going to manage it just like it would be if splits were all over the place. So Gordon to Quintana. It's a 2-2. That's bad news. 2-2-2 two, 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 because he's got that 11 there. And even though Gordon's got a 1, which is the best you can have, he would have had to have that star to stop the hit because as we've seen, a 12 is a single to left, and you would need that asterisk to stop that hit. He's got the asterisk in row one, but not in row two. Had this blue die been a one, it would have taken the hit away. But it didn't. It's a base hit. Runners advance one base with two outs. Runner on second will score. So a key base hit there for Carlos Quintana to give the Red Sox an insurance run, make it five to one, and Tom Gordon did not do the job they wanted him to do. Of course, he's got a bad roll, but that's beside the point. All right, here's Scott Cooper. 6-3 is a 31. 6-2 is a 1 total of 32 in column 6. And a 32 in column 6 is a pop out to third to end the inning. So now it's a 5-1 to one game. And for the Red Sox, Tony Fossis will be coming on, a lefty. Because you've got Joyner and Brett, two lefties scheduled to lead off for the Royals. Gordon has a high rating for... Relief, so he can stay in the game to pitch a little longer. But Tony Fossis will be in to face Wally Joyner. Since he's facing a lefty, we will reference the top three rows, not the bottom three. And he's significantly better against the lefties. So here's Joyner. We get a 5-5-6. Five, five, All right, 5-5 five, five on Joyner is a 20. 5-6 against the lefty is a four. So we get a total of 24 in column five. 24 in column five is a walk to Joiner, And we go to the M on the action chart. M on the action chart talks about potential wild pitches, balks, stuff like that. We get a six. So a six is wild pitch B0. So we come over here. 
and it says if pitcher's wild pitch rating is zero, score wild pitch. All right, the pitcher's wild pitch rating is a three, so there's no wild pitch there. However, if catcher's pass ball rating is a zero, score it's a pass ball. Catcher, Tony Pena. Tony Pena, his pass ball rating is a four, so that's not a zero either. So since neither come into play, it will not be a wild pitch. It'll simply be no play as Pena is able to block the play. So Joyner reaches with a walk, but nothing else happens. Had both been zero, then your score is a wild pitch according to what the rule book says. So had the wild pitch rating on the pitcher been zero and the pass ball rating on the catcher been zero, if you want to figure out what is a pass ball or a wild pitch, book says wild pitch. All right, here's George Brett. 2-5. Two 2-5 five. Two five is a 16. 2-1 two is a 1 with an asterisk by it. So if he gets a base hit, this could take it away because the asterisk is there. But a 2-5 is a 16. So we go to 17 in column 2. You had the 16 and the 1 for 17 in column 2. 17 in column 2 says strike out with bases empty or fly out to center of men on base. So since somebody's on base already, being joiner with the walk, it's a fly out to center field. And like I said, the, the play board tells you all these things, so it's pretty self-explanatory. They do a good job of spelling it out for you. Here's Felix Jose, another lefty. 3-6, and there you go. We've got the 3-6, which is the left-right split. So again, since... And the 3 2 for Fossus is a 1. So that totals a 48. Come down here, 48 is a line drive. Left handed pitcher. It's a line drive towards right field, but a left handed pitcher, it's a leaping catch by the second baseman. Since the runner is not on second, there's no double play chance, but it will be a line out to second. And now that's, and I circled that again. So that is the fourth time by my count that the left right split has come into play on that 3-6 roll. Fourth time I roll 3-6. So that's a lot. Doesn't usually happen that much. Here's Brett Main. Another lefty on lefty matchup for Fosses. We get a 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three is a 3. 5-5 five, five is a 4. Total of 7 in column number 5. And that is a walk. With bases full counts 2 balls with bases are not full. So it is a walk. And that brings up Kevin McReynolds. So the righties are coming up now against Fosses. So we're going to pull Fosses. He did his thing against the lefties, but he's going to come out. And the Red Sox will again go to the bullpen. And let's see who they decide to go to. They're going to go to Greg Harris. Greg Harris, the right-hander, is on for the Red Sox against Kevin McReynolds. Runners at first and second with two outs, so Fossus went two-thirds of an inning. McReynolds, 2-2, two, two, and there's that. Well, this is not a base. This is not an 11 on McReynolds. It's got a 55, so it's a little bit different here. 2-2 two, two is a 55, so we go to column 2 and look at the 55. Well, 2-1 from Harris makes it a 1, so that's a total of 56. 56. We come over here to 56. The, white die, the blue die is a 1, so it's a left fielder. So the raised number is a 3. It does not change because it's not in the orange. It stays a 3. The left fielder is who we're checking. The left fielder has to have a range of 4 or better to stop this. Left fielder is Mike Greenwell. Greenwell's range just happens to be a 4. So he's able to take that hit away. Before it drops in, Mike Greenwell makes the play and ends the inning, saves a run. That would have been at least one run would have come in. But instead, he makes the play, and the inning is over. So nice play by Greenwell. And we go to the ninth. Score still 5-1. to one. Tom Gordon's going to still stay in there. And he'll be facing Scott Cooper to lead off. Cooper, 0 for 4 in this game. I'm sorry, it's not going to be Cooper. It's going to be Pena, because Cooper made the last out last inning. My bad. It is Pena, who's actually up. So Pena, let's see, Pena, 1-5 is a 35. 1-1 one, one is a 1, total of 36. It's a ground ball to third. So Pena grounds to third for out number one to start the ninth. Luis Rivera is up, and if the Red Sox were behind, I would pinch hit for him, but they're not, so we'll let him go. 
one five one one five is a five one one is a one total of six which is a strikeout so two down back to the top of the order for Fletcher he's one for four with a double one two is a 35 one one is a one total of 36 in column one and that again is a ground ball to third to end the inning so the inning is over we go to the bottom of the ninth, last chance for the Royals. It is not a save situation, so Greg Harris will stay out there. The closer for the Red Sox in 1993, according to the well, according to the cards and everything else, is Jeff Russell. So Russell is loosening the pen just in case Harris, you know, fumbles it a bit. They will have Russell ready. Brian McRae will lead things off for the Royals in the bottom of the ninth. 6-1-3. Six, 6-1 one, six, one is a 16. 6-3 six, is a 1. Total of 17 in column 6. And a 17 in column 6 is a deep fly to left. So McRae finishes the game. So many it doesn't go extra innings. He finishes 0 for 4. Here's Jose Lean. Now, do we want to start pinch hitting is the question. Let's look at the pinch hitters for the Royals. And we will do some pinch hitting. We're going to pinch it for Jose Leand with Chris Gwynn, brother of Tony Gwynn. So Chris Gwynn will pinch hit. He's a 300 hitter plus he's a lefty. And if it goes extra innings, Rico Rossi could play second base. But right now, Chris Gwynn is on to face Greg Harris. 5 2 2. 5 2 is a 27. 5 2 is a 3 for 30 in column number 5. 30 in column 5 is a fly to center, so Chris Gwynn fails. That's out number 2. And last chance is Greg Gagne. He's a 280 hitter, so we're not going to pinch hit for him. 6-1 is a 16. 6-4 six, is a 2. Total of 18 in column 6. 18 in column 6 is a fly out to left, and that is the ball game. That is your game right there. I'll move the board out of the way. And we'll bring the score sheet in. There is your ball game. Total score, final score of five to one. And I'll do the totals real quickly. There was a throwing error on Brett Maines. So the Royals made an error. The Red Sox did not. And we'll check the base hits for both sides. For Boston, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. For the, Reds, uh, for the Royals, rather, their hits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Just 5. Left on base for the Red Sox. One, two, three, four, five. Five left on base. And for Kansas City, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They left eight on base. All right, so Clemens is your winner. Apier is your loser. I don't want to go through and do all the stats on the um, sheet. Now, it looks like, and maybe because of some feedback, but I seem to remember that on the old replay score sheets I used to have, the strikeouts came before the walks, and I mentioned that that was kind of backwards because most line scores, you do your walks first, then your strikeouts, so maybe somebody suggest that to them and they altered it so that's nice that it has it that way so well, let's take a look here i can go ahead and do the i'll go ahead and do the uh, thing for clemens against the royals because there's only five hits that he allowed and let's see what else they did fosses came in right here so through seven innings yeah he gave up the five hits and the one run which was earned didn't hit anybody didn't throw any wild pitches the only wild pitch done was by Brewer, I think. All right, so let's check his walks and strikeouts. He walked one, two, 
three, four. He walked four. So Clemens walked four. He struck out not that many. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, just five. So the total line score on Roger Clemens, seven innings pitch, five hits, one run was earned, four walks and five strikeouts, and of course he gets the win. Tony Fossas went two-thirds of an inning. He walked two, so he had trouble with walks. No walk, no strikeouts, no hits, no runs. So nothing else along the board. And Harris faced all four but didn't give up anything. No walks, no strikeouts, no hits, no nothing. No save because the score was four-run differential, not a three-run differential. All right, let's check Kevin Apier. Total hits for the Red Sox was eight, so we'll work backwards to make it easier. Gordon gave up one hit, and Brewer gave up no hits. So that means, by default, that seven hits were given up by Apier. Runs. Total of four he gave up, and all were earned. Despite the throwing error here, based on what happened the rest of the inning, that would have been an earned run anyway, so takes care of that. There were one home run in the game that he gave up to Andre Dawson. Uh, Nobody was hit by a pitch for either team, as far as I can tell. Now let's check. uh, Let's see. Nothing on the runs for Brewer. Now Brewer gave up a run. The inherited run was given up by Gordon, but it was charged to Brewer. All right, let's check walks and strikeouts for Brewer. He walked one, struck out one. Gordon had no walks and one strikeout. And let's see, Apier had how many walks? One, two, he had two walks. And he struck out one. I'm realizing my penmanship is horrible. One, two, three, four, five strikeouts for Apier. All right, so that's my final, what my final score sheet looks like. Clemens the win, Apier the loss, there was no save. For Boston, five runs, eight hits, no errors, and five left. For the Royals, one run, five hits, one error, and eight left. And there you go. That's a playthrough of replay baseball. Hopefully, I touched on most of the rules and why we were looking at it and what you know how the cards can change based on one pitcher rating. Um, if there's other questions that I didn't get to, I think we hit the ballpark uh, section. We hit the rear play section. We hit the foul ball section for for a uh, ballpark check. We hit the left-right splits on that 3-6 roll. The only thing I think we didn't hit was a split on the column 6, where they have some splits here. If you're, to the, if you're facing a lefty, you use the number to the left of the slash. And if you're facing a righty, you use the number to the right of the slash. Pretty, that's pretty much all you do with that. We hit the action chart. Um, the only thing we didn't, I don't think we hit the third base coach or bunt play. So we missed those. But you're not going to hit everything in one game. So, But we did hit the left-right split on that 3-6 result four times, two for each team. So even if the players aren't rated on their cards for lefty-righty, that 3-6 can come into play when you least expect it. So it's wise to manage as if it does come into play every at-bat. So... That's my presentation there. Uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. It's the first time I'm trying this um, with the setup. So hopefully it comes out okay. We shall see. I actually wanted to do this on Sunday when I had more time. I didn't want to rush it one weeknight, so I'm recording this before I do my Yankee game. Uh, still made. I may post this. I'm not sure when I'm going to post this, to be honest with you. I may post it before the Yankee game or after the Yankee game. I haven't really decided. I really want to watch this myself. Um to, to see if it's something I want to put out. Uh, if it's if it comes up where I really don't like how it turned out, then I'll just delete it and do something else. But hopefully this is good enough to go through and, and be a uh, helpful tool for those that are new to replay baseball uh, or maybe you're unfamiliar with some of the idiosyncrasies. You can, if it gets to the part that you had a question on, you can always go back and watch it again. And again, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. I'll do my best to refer to the rules and answer it. But that's good from here. So again, from Kauffman Stadium, final score, Boston 5, Kansas City 1, 1993, opening day at Kansas City. Roger Clemens gets the best of Kevin Apier. 
Till next time, enjoy play whatever game you choose to play, how we choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.